Good day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So today we got a significant update for the DJI Mavic 3. They've added a ton of new features, made a lot of enhancements and fixed some issues. Earlier today I went out for a test flight to test some of the new features. So in today's video I'm just going to kind of go over some of the main new features that have been added. I'm not going to go over everything because this video would be quite long. Just some of the really more important ones that I think most people would find interesting. Now a big question that a lot of people may be asking is if this firmware update fixed the slow GPS connectivity. And and unfortunately, in my case, no, it did not. In fact, I think it may have even made it worse. Months ago, before some of their early fixes came out, it was taking me anywhere from six to seven minutes, sometimes longer, sometimes less, to get a GPS lock of 12 satellites so it could set the home point. And then, of course, with the last firmware update, DJI did release a fix for the GPS. Now, it didn't really fix the problem, but it did make some improvements. On average, I was getting a GPS lock in about two minutes, two and a half, sometimes even a little bit less. But today I had a heck of a time now. That doesn't mean it is worse. There's a lot of other environmental factors and things that can affect the GPS connectivity. Uh, but today it took me a good five minutes. And even then I still only had 11 satellites. I actually had to put the drone up in the air to uh, finish getting the rest. Now DJI did not make any mention of the GPS issue in the firmware release notes. So the aircraft firmware is now version 01.00.0700. Now I fly with the RC Pro, so the version for the RC Pro is now version 03.01.0700. And of course there was an update to the DJI Fly app and it is version 1.6.4 now. Now there's a whole bunch of release notes about everything that's been added. Now, I'm not going to uh, go over all that. I'm not going to read it like I normally do. We'd be here forever. But what I will do is uh, put a link down in the description of this video if you want to go to the forum post and read a little bit more about it. So the first new feature that they've added here, and we'll take a look at, if we go to our camera settings, you can see here we can now shoot in HLG. And if we go back to the preview, you can see it's kind of a flat profile. And this is definitely something that you do have to color grade yourself. Now this profile has been missing from the Mavic 3. It was available on the Air 2S. So it is available now for the Mavic 3. Uh, so a lot of people will be very happy with that. I don't really film in HLG very often, but uh, definitely it is nice that it's there. Now the other interesting thing that they've done here is we can now shoot in three times digital zoom. Now I'm not talking about explorer mode here, but when you were filming with the Hasselblad camera, when you went to zoom, you could only go up to a maximum of two times zoom. But as you can see now, we can click and it goes to two times and it goes to three times now. On top of that, we can also use that dial at the back on the right hand side and we can scroll through. Or again, we can press on it and then we can manually dial it in. So another nice new feature. Now, speaking of zoom, they've made some massive changes to the telecamera and uh, we'll kind of go a little bit more into detail on that. Uh, the first thing is you don't actually have to go into explorer mode to make use of that zoom. For example, right above the digital zoom, you can see we have a seven. So if we click on that, that's going to take us directly into the tele zoom to the seven time zoom mode. And from there, we can even zoom in farther all the way up to 28 times. If we zoom all the way back, it'll take us back to that seven times. So that is definitely a little bit more convenient. You don't actually have to go into explorer mode every time. But the important thing to note is if you're recording just in the regular mode, you can zoom into that three times. But if you try to go to that seven times, it won't allow it. You'll notice that the Explorer mode icon has been moved as well. So if you do want to go into Explorer mode, you just have to go into your film settings and you can see it's now listed there. And now we're in our regular Explorer mode where we can go from one times, right up, jumps to seven and then to 28. Now they've made some massive improvements to that telecamera, the way it focuses. And we can actually go into Pro mode now with it. Now it's very important, you can't be in Explorer mode for example, if we go back to Explorer mode here, you can see we only have the same options as we had before. If we try to go into Pro mode, you can see there it won't allow us. But if we go back to our regular filming mode, you can see that we can jump to the seven times fixed optical zoom. And now we can go into Pro mode and we can adjust some of our settings like shutter speed, ISO. The only thing we can adjust is the aperture. It's fixed at 4.4. Uh, so definitely a nice new feature. And as you can see here, when in 4K, we have some new frame rates, 25 frames per second, 30 frames per second, and 50 frames per second. Now that's for video mode. If we go to photo mode, we get some new enhancements as well. If we go to our camera settings now, we're in seven times zoom there, you can see we have access to RAW and JPEG plus RAW. On top of that, we now have access to some of the camera modes. You can see we can do a single shot, A, B, burst and a time shot. 
So definitely some nice improvements there. On top of that, when using that tele zoom, you now have access to some of the intelligent flight features such as master shots. Now, another thing that they've added here is higher frame rates when filming in slow motion. So if we go to our slow motion feature and we'll go to our resolutions and frame rate, and you can see here when we select 1080, we have the option now of 120 frames per second or 200 frames per second. I haven't done any testing with it. Um, from what I've heard, it's not that good. It's uh, cropped in quite a bit. You can see there from 120 to 200 frames per second, it really crops in. So I don't know how usable that's going to be, but uh, definitely we'll be testing that out at some point in the near future. Not really something that I do use a lot. Most of the time when I'm filming, it's either in 4K60 or the 5.1K30. Now the release notes also states that now when you're filming a master shot or using quick shots, you can set your color profile to D-Log or HLG. And in the release notes, it does say, however, that it's not available for Asteroid. On top of that, if you own the wide angle lens, they've made some improvements to the intelligent flight features as well. Up until this update, if you mounted the wide angle lens, the intelligent flight features were no longer accessible. But now with this latest update, you can use quick shots, master shots, hyperlapses, and focus track. However, again, Asteroid is not available. Now, a few last things that they've changed here. If we go to our settings, and we go to control and we go to button customization, you can see they now have a new customizable button. They call it C3. And that's the button here at the top on the right hand side. Now this is just for the RC Pro, uh, but definitely a nice feature. I've actually set my C3 button to explore mode, but they've taken it a step further. You can now use any of your customizable buttons, the C1, C2, or C3, in conjunction with that dial on the right hand side. By default, that just controls the zoom, but now if you use it in conjunction with one of the customizable buttons, for example, the C3, that will now adjust the focal length. And like all the customizable buttons, we can click on it and change the behavior to whatever we want. So definitely that is a good feature because it's always nice to have things customizable. And that way you can set it up exactly the way you like it. Now, another really interesting thing they've done here, if we go over to our safety tab and we select bypass, that's gonna make use of our APAS 5.0. Now, APAS is where the drone will find a safe route around an object. The problem is that sometimes it's not very smooth. It can be a little bit jerky, but they have this new option called Nifty now. So we can enable that. Now, it does give you a warning that you do have to take precaution because the attitude of the drone may not behave the same. So you increase your risk of perhaps crashing or running into something. But what that does is make the drone fly a little smoother when it's trying to bypass an object. Like I said, I'm going to go out tomorrow and test that out a little bit more thoroughly. Uh, but definitely it's something that could be of interest to me. And a few last little tidbits here. They've increased the home point refresh rate. They've optimized the focus performance when recording with the telecamera, optimized the stability of the aircraft when shooting a hyperlapse, and they fixed an issue where you were unable to use a hyperlapse when flying near a flight attitude limit zone. Now, all those updates are for all the Mavic 3s. Now, if you own the Cine model, you got a few extra updates, uh, mainly to do with the ProRes. You get two new shooting modes now, a total of three. Um, I don't own the Cine version, so I can't really go into that too much into detail. The other thing you can do with the Cine model now is have an interval of one second when filming a hyperlapse. So if you own the Cine model, those are some updates that you have specific to your drone. So that's basically it. That's the new firmware for the Mavic 3. Uh, the Mavic 3 is definitely a fully complete drone now. It's pretty incredible what DJI has done with it. Um, those new tele settings are going to make a lot of people happy. I don't know if I'll be using it every time I fly, but definitely having those nice new options and pro mode will come in handy from time to time. Well, folks, that's basically it. Just a boring firmware video. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you found it had value. It's always greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.